to the Gambia and we hope that after this event you will have time to at least visit the place and know the reason why we say Gambia is indeed the smiling coast of West Africa. And to every other young person present here today, we welcome you all and we hope that by the end of today or by the end of this session we will um, learn one or two things from our journey and some of the challenges that you have faced, we have faced as youth leaders and some of the things that we feel might inspire you towards your journey um, on leadership. And I always say that leadership is not only about being a boss. Leadership is not only about being a manager. You can be a leader in your community and make changes. And that is what I see in Gambian youth, and thumbs up for that. You're not too young to be. Trust me on that one. Don't give up. There are challenges in every business. Every business has a challenge. And then you're not going to have a rosy all the time. The storm would definitely come, but you need to be able to believe in yourself enough to say, yes, I can do this. And yes, you can. Just believe in yourself. Together for the leadership and the management team of Pan African Leadership Summit for this important convergence. Gambia is equally the capital city of youth development in Africa. Of course, we will always reference the African Youth Charter, and it was born in this country in 2006. It was not only because the African Youth Charter was born here, but we have the African Commission on Human and People's Rights right here. And in 2016, we also hosted the Banyan Plus 10, which was the 10th year anniversary of the African Youth Charter, to review the progress on the implementation of this important continental document. And in 2018, 2019, we also hosted the Pan-African Youth Conference, third Pan-African Youth Conference. These are all platforms we created to get young people all over the continent to come over to their homeland, that is the Gambia. So welcome to the Gambia, welcome to the smiling coast of Africa, and we all re-echo together, if we can vote, we can lead also. Thank you very much. Hello, Black Sit family. It's Juliet once again. How are you? I hope you're well. It's the afternoon, and I'm sure you're fed up of me saying Naka Goody B, Naka Big Check B. So I'm just going to say Naka. So, why am I here, and why have I got this big, beautiful backdrop here? The reason why is because I am at the Pan African Youth Leadership Summit. That's what's going on today. And I have got a wonderful gentleman with me, Lamin. And he is the head of the foundation, as National far as I know. National Youth Council. Yeah. The National Youth Council. Of the National Youth Council. Youth Council. Gambia. Right, okay, listen, I'm going to let you introduce yourself because you say it much better Perfect. than I do, yeah? <laughs> and I want you to project your voice to the family, the Black Sit family, and tell them who you are and what you do. Yeah, you're all hey, important job. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, Lamine. You're welcome. Give yes. me a hug. Give me a hug. Oh, Give me a hug. Oh, oh. Always, always show love. We, that's you. how we begin. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I'm Lamin, Lamin Dabo, the Executive Director of the Gambia National Youth Council. We are here at the Pan-African Youth Leadership uh, Summit. This is um, organized in partnership with different uh, Pan-African organizations, but of course local actors in the Gambia, in the Smiling Coast. So the main essence of this award is to recognize the contributions of young people towards um, social change, towards development. Um, youth-led initiatives that have impacted lives of different young people in Africa and in Europe. Um, young women, young men, you know, in different sectors. So their efforts are going to be recognized this evening. And the main rationale for this is to inspire hope, is to make young people also look up to these young champions as role models, as people they can look up to you know, to also control some narratives. It's not all that negative, you know, the unemployment, the migration, the, you know, you name them. But we have people who are contributing their lot. They are contributing their energy, their talent, their resources, you know, to better the continent, to better Africa, to better their families, to better their communities. And we cannot just forget them. We need to recognize their contributions. And that's what we are doing today. Join us to celebrate young Africans anywhere they are found. Mm -hmm. And say someone wants to come and they want to bring their children, their teenage children, their youth, they want to come back to Africa. They've had enough, yeah? And they want to come back and they want to establish themselves here. What opportunities are there here? 
because people can talk about oh you know let's complain about this and that but what opportunities are there for the youth and what opportunities can we bring so that's two trust, questions trust me i think there is a whole lot of opportunity here a whole lot of opportunity in fact I would say if you look at all our sectors, I would call them, um, I would say we have a virgin economy. It's yes. on top, uh, so to speak. We have not exploited it. It's not exploited. We are still using it, but it's not exploited. Let me say this. If you go to the IT, the technology, for, that, for, for instance, you know, it's an industry we can actually you know, invest in. You, know, you look at what we are doing, still we are in the manual, we are doing a lot of we seen some young entrepreneurs coming in, government young entrepreneurs introducing some uh, some technologies into businesses, into finances, you know, the fine techs and others. But still, looking at the coverage, you know, it's just a drop in an ozone. Mm -hmm. So you go to the agricultural sector; it's the same. You know, we have vast pieces of lands that are here that you know that are arable. I mean, you don't have mountains, so you you, you can till the land and actually be able to produce something that not only feed the people but could also be even for export to feed mm -hmm. all that. So this is an opportunity. But you also go to animal house boundary, go to small ruminants management, you go to poultry. These are all areas that we could actually do. And again, let me say, it's not just for production, but as a huge opportunity in terms of the value chain, the processing, the, the marketing, mm -hmm. the, the sales, the packaging. And you know, Gambia is just closer to Europe, closer to other parts of the world. And of course, there could be a huge opportunity for export. Yes. You know, so Gambia is also part of ECOWAS. ECOWAS is a 15-member state. You know, you have an opportunity to enter a single market of 15-member states. Gambia is the 28th country to sign the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So, meaning, if you are in the Gambia, you make an investment. Um, you can actually have the whole continent African market. This is a boom. <laughs> So there is a whole lot of opportunity that we can explore. And I think wow. not just for Gambians, we have Gamb but African diaspora need to come home, the home of Kunta Kinte, the home of uh, Alex Haley, and the home of a uh, lot of Gamb Af uh, African Americans to come home and, and, and invest in their country. And that's home the Gambia. Hey! Come. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is a subscriber. Would you believe it? I've come out of the hotel. And I'm I, do I know you? And I was like, I was being polite anyway. But this is a subscriber. I want to introduce yourself to the Black Sick family. Hello, Black Sick family. This is Usman Toure, a final year development major, University of the Gambia. And I'm a subscriber to the Black Sick family. Yeah. Because um, Juliet really inspired me when I look into some of the videos that they've uploaded on YouTube. And it shows, it depicts about the realities of the Gambia and it's inspired, it motivates other individuals outside the Gambia that with the little that they have, they can make big investment and a big change in Africa. So that inspired me a lot, Julius. Oh, <laughs> listen, I gotta give this guy a hug. Like, yeah! No, seriously, I mean, so you're a final year student, so yeah. you go to university here, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So there are universities in the Gambia? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, there is a university in the Gambia, of course, and that is called University of the Gambia, and we also have other private universities, of course. You know, with determination, with the belief that you can make it, now I'm a final year student, and by December, I'll be with my BSc in development, so which is a plus. So wow. there is no magic in it. It's just believing that you can do it. And that is the most unique thing that we have as Gambians. Like we interact with one another, we live with one another. It doesn't matter how big the family is. We say everything, no matter how little it is. And people are content with that. That even if things are going hard, you can still observe smiling faces under each and every person that you meet along the street. So that is a plus for everybody in the Gambia. And that is why I'm a proud Gambian and a proud African. And I believe I can make it. And I'm going nowhere but in the Gambia. <laughs> Nobody is going to do it for us. That's right. If we are all running away, you know, when are we going to make it? We have to stay in Africa, develop in Africa, and then show to the world that Africa have a better image than the one they portray in the West. I think this is what we all need to do as Africans and then we promote that as Pan-Africans and also as Gambians. Excellent. I couldn't have said it better myself actually. You know, I propose that you come and do some shows with me. This brother's got it going on. Yeah. But seriously, um, 
you know, I think that the, the, the misrepresentation of Africa um, has, wow, I, I mean, it permeated my brain. And I knew because I was coming from a Pan-African background, but still, you know, the images are forced upon us. So I think you young Gambians have a responsibility yeah. to show the other side of Gambia, the Gambia that, you know, we diasporians and many people in the West don't see. They just don't see it. Exactly. I think that is the work of the academics. That is the work that we need to do as young scholars. For far too long, people have been portraying Africa negatively to the outside world. And we know that that was done by individuals whose sole aim was to dominate Africa, to exploit Africa's resources, and then to continue to colonize us politically. Now, our role as academics, as young scholars, is how do we make sure that this picture is changed from the literature itself going back to rewrite the books, to rewrite the history of Africa, and then to show to the world that we have a better image that the, that the world is actually seen as of today. And then you also come to realize that we need to invest in Africa because foreign in investment always leads to capital flies and etc. Because people who mm -hmm. come in and invest, at the end they can take all the resources and then you come to realize that it becomes another challenge for us. But when Africans invest, the money stays in Africa, which is a plus. It can enhance, it yeah. can help when it comes to employment, when it comes to, you know, coming up with all the facilities and then enhancing the development that we own that we all desire as Africans and etc. I think that is what we need to do as we speak and that is what we all Africans need to be thinking into that particular line like trying to see how we can repent that particular picture shown by the outsiders yes. about Africa because they do. in fact let me tell you that was this quotation that I read it was actually done by a British parliamentarian Lord Macaulay in 1835 he speaks about Africa and then he said in order for the West to dominate Africa, they need to overthrow our very backbone. And that is our education system. When we believe that everything that is Western is correct, then they can dominate us forever. Exactly. And that is 1835. They've been working on those bases. So today it is high time because we know the realities. Let us try to rewrite the history. Let us try to work again and attract investment in Africa by Africans. Okay. Well, I also feel so inspired when I watch, you know, your video with Wooden Maya and Maya, hi. <laughs> I could not see him. Yeah, he watches, he watches, he watches, he so, watches. Yeah. Maya, I'm saying hi. And then that was so inspirational. I was like, wow, how comes this lady is speaking like this? I wish every African could think in this particular way. Then automatically the literature and the realities will change. Thank you. Thank you. We have to Julia. be the change we want to see, yeah? We have to be the change we want to see. If we don't want to support uh, those uh, systems that oppress us, then we need to come and be free where we're not oppressed. Look, we're free, yeah? Sure. We're free, you know? Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm saying family. What do I say? Every video come home. I can't, I don't know how to reiterate it. I can't um, express the love, the feeling, the grounding, the, the, just the, the inspiration. And you know what I like about here? Yeah, One bowl of food, everybody eats. Sure. And that's what I'm saying to everybody. We will find a way. We will find a way home. Yeah, we will find a way home. So I'm going to pretend like I'm knocking my shoes out. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right, I'm doing the freedom dance, yeah? Come on, come on, let's do the freedom dance. We're gonna come back, we're gonna come back, we're gonna come back, we're gonna come back. And that's what it's about. And you welcome us back? Yeah, you're welcome. We're Let welcome. them all come back. You're all welcome. Welcome to Africa, welcome to the Gambia. Hi, Black Sit family, I'm with Demba, and I'm gonna jump out because this brother has so much to say that, well, I'm jumping out on this one. This man, listen to what he has to say. He's showing us the future. I believe that the children are our future. You know, teach them when and let them lead the way. Listen to what my brother has to say, okay? Um, I am Dembo Kambi, uh, the chairperson of the Gambia National Youth Council. Uh, I was part of the panelists for, uh, on the team, Not Too Young to Run, representing the Africa, African Union Youth Envoy. Aya Kebi, who is currently um, on a youth mission at the United Nations headquarters in New York. Um, basically, um, the discussion is based on the role of young people taking ownership of the leadership in Africa. 
which we feel you know will pave the way in ending all sort of crimes all sort of conflicts and deliver the Africa we want so what kind of stuff is your organization involved in um, as a council um, we have a this national youth council it was established in 2000 to coordinate and supervise all youth programs and activities in this country and also register youth organizations in this country. But in, we also advise government on the issues of young people like in budgeting and, and on other youth development needs, you know, we advise government on some of those issues. So this is basically the role of the council and uh, we also try to work with partners to ensure that they support youth development initiative. And basically that's what the council does to ensure that young people's voice are heard into the development process of the country. So you're based here in the Gambia or you're, you're based somewhere else? I am based here in the Gambia. Okay, and how important is the role of young people, particularly from the diaspora? So I'll give you an example. Myself, I'm 28 years old. I'm a Pan-African activist. Mm -hmm. I was born in England. My, my dad is African. Mm -hmm. uh, my mum is from Caribbean heritage. Mm -hmm. I was raised from my mum. But Africans like me that are in the diaspora, what role do you think we can play in helping Africa? I think um, being an African, you know, all of us have a role to play. You know, being anywhere, you, ever you are staying in the world, you can still contribute to the development of Africa. Because even at the level of the African Union, um, we, have a, we have a youth advisory board where the diaspora is represented. Almost all the youth structures in this country, or in this continent, we have diaspora as included diaspora being represented because we felt these are young people from Africa, these are young people with African background. So their role is to support and also empower, you know, share their experiences. Probably you learn some experiences in the United Kingdom. That probably young people from the country where maybe your, 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 your background is does not have opportunity to some of those experiences. You can share with them, inspire them, and they will become you know, fully participating in, 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 in the development programs of that country. And it, it is never a deterrent being outside of Africa. Whether you are outside or you are inside Africa, our role as young people still is very important. We must all come together, and that's why now, in every setting, in, even at the level of the AU, they are now bringing diaspora, because we felt a lot of Africans are outside Africa. And because they are out of Africa, we cannot leave them behind. They also have a quota to play. Today, you look at the world, the world, especially in Africa, we, did, we relied more, more, more on remittance. And these remittances are coming from our brothers and sisters from the diaspora. And that also is one of the, 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 economic, the, 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 the economic ventures of African countries. So as, a, as, as, as for that being the case, the involvement of Africans that are, that are outside Africa is very, very crucial to the development of Africa because the remittances that they bring, the monies that they send to Africa, is what is developing Africa. So Africa's development cannot go without Africans in diaspora. And just finally, my last question is, is there any particular development in Gambia or any industry that you would say is, is um, that you would recommend or you would see that Gambia needs to expand, whether it's media, construction, any kind of... Yeah, I think um, in the Gambia here, there are a lot of opportunities because currently you, you've seen a lot of uh, young people going into construction, you know, bringing construction companies and, 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 and real estate and all those stuff. They will form their real estate and also form constructions part of. You know, we've seen young people also being going into music, you know, because arts is also another thing that creates employment, you know, because in those days, you know, people's perception about art was only to provide pleasure, only to profile, provide fun. But the arts is now moving from that direction. It is creating employment. And we have seen a lot of young people in this country that are becoming musicians. And there is a market in that area. And also in the tourism sector, we have the, we have the, the places where ecotourism could be promoted and all those stuff. You know, all those are places where one could invest into. We have places here that are forests, that are very close to the rivers, but there is nothing like an ecotourism center, but there are very, very few in this country. All those things can, could be expedited and could create employment for our young people. Well, good evening, viewers. My name is Marlon Fati. Um, basically, what I want to tell to my brothers and sisters in the diaspora is that 
they have to come back in their land and start investing on their people because as there is this local proverb um, a stick could be in a river for so long but it can never change into cro crocodile so if you are in other people's country it's better for you to make your home as the best place because um, you actually know that how your home is being suffering you understand so that suffocation or may probably other difficulties that makes you to go to another country in search of greener pasture so if you are able to tap some um, some revenue or some other tenure there so you should come back to your country and start investing on your brothers and sisters I think that is um, that is tremendously great for um, our brothers and sisters Africans in the Europe so I thank you all thank you so thank you. much thank that you. was excellent okay. so his advice was to was to um, you know come back home and invest in your brothers and sisters here. Now, some people say, oh, but we came from slavery. If it wasn't for slavery, you know, we, we've gone across uh, the, the ocean and we've no one's ever come back for us. And we suffered in the diaspora, you know, and we've, you know, but this is what people say. This is what people say, you know. So I want you to, to tell people that they're welcome, you yeah. know, yeah. And, and that, you know, you're here for them because I know I felt love, nothing but love. Yeah. I got nothing but love for your baby. Black power, black people. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So yeah, uh, we, I think we love a lot of people, especially we love us black. Like we love black power. We love us. We are pro blacks man. Like generally. So studying computer science, I realized that a lot of women are not really into computer science because they feel like it's a male-dominated world. We need those women outside the diaspora to come and tell women, like, look, you can do it. One, two, three. three. Smash, Smash that <laughs> like button and uh, subscribe. one love. Subscribe, comment. Um, please, like I said, any donations are always welcome. And, you know, what can we do? Yeah, come home. That's what we can do, come yeah. home. And um, Black Sit messengers, keep those messages rolling in. Messengers, <laughs> messages rolling in. And um, keep watching, please. And keep commenting and let us know your views. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, vlog. Oh. And uh, we've got plenty more to come. So uh, keep in touch. Big love. One nation, one Africa, one people.